All right, so this video, I'm gonna be walking you through our inbox management process that we use at Leapbird, where we manage over 50 plus clients' accounts and over 2,000 inboxes with just one inbox manager. We've built this system, it successfully works, it's very scalable, and it's very easy to train and delegate people on as well. And so, you know, after sending over 10,000 emails, the type of responses that I got that led to an actual meeting being booked typically came down to five categories. Category one would be information request. So this is someone that's like replying to your email and they're saying, hey, I'd love to see more information, you know, and get, you know, more details on how you go about X, Y, and Z, whatever it is, right? And so people requesting information, you know, we get people that were just immediately interested and wanted to get on a call or a demo of some sort. So they're, they're requesting a meeting. We'd have referral requests where someone's saying, hey, I don't manage this in my organization, but Billy Bob Joe in the sales department does. And so you should reach out to billybobjoe at gmail.com. And so a referral request sending us to someone else in their organization. The fourth category we got would, you know, people respond saying, we're not interested at this moment, but if you could follow up in three months, that's when we make decisions on new vendors. And then the last and final category we would get is a custom response request. And so this is, you know, if someone, ask a very in-depth question where you know the other categories don't kind of work for it and you kind of need to write like a custom response to the the recipient that's the the last category we would get and so once you kind of understand that these are the, the, the five most common categories of responses that you'll get from your leads you can really templatize the responses that get back to them right and so that's why we built out what is called subsequences and i'll kind of explain this in depth right now so what a subsequence is basically being able to respond within the same thread automate the follow-ups and basically providing templated responses and so this is super important and super vital when it comes to inbox management and it's really going to allow you to scale because where i saw our bottlenecks with inbox management was a we're customizing every response which is you know not scalable and it's honestly not worth it because you know your conversion rate may be you know slightly better than the template response but like it wasn't by a high enough degree to where it really mattered on it and the other thing i noticed is once you start to get you know more than 10 15 20 clients you know and managing over 100 200 inboxes automating those follow-ups or just you know managing those follow-ups manually is very tedious and you know there'd be tons of times where things would slip under the cracks and we just wouldn't get back to people on time and so we really wanted to create a standardized process where we could just simply you know categorize emails and automate the subsequences and the messages that go out and so that's why we built subsequences in our email platform that we don't currently use anymore but i was able to convince Vibug from smartly to build into his and that's why subsequences are extremely powerful but the thing about subsequences is that you need to be able to write them in a specific way to address all of the categories and so that's kind of what i want to get into right here so we will always typically write only three emails in our subsequences. So you'll see right here in this diagram, you know, we have our initial cadence, which is the initial cold email. And then once we receive the response, we will enroll them into one of the subsequences. And our subsequences are simply three emails that are separated by three days minimum. And our first email is simply answering whatever the subsequence is meant for, right? So if it's someone that's requesting a demo, it's simply providing times. And then email two is doing a simple follow-up, just a conversational nudge. And then email three is asking if there's someone else in the organization that we should be reaching out to. And the reason why we only keep it three is we never saw after the fourth or fifth or sixth email that our meeting book rate was much higher. It's usually always getting responses within the first three. And you know, by putting more, you know, you're probably gonna be annoying the prospect, which could lead to them marking your email spam, which will automatically tank your deliverability, right? And so it's not worth it to do more than three. And it, chances are, if they're not responding after email three, they're probably just not interested in what you're offering. And so, you know, follow up with them past email three, I would suggest it in other channels like cold calling or LinkedIn or wherever else you can find them. And so that's kind of how we go about writing our subsequences. And one very vital thing about subsequences and just inbox management in particular is that you need to have clear next steps. And that's always typically going to be, you know, requesting time or providing them times that you're available. And so the way we're able to do this is using the day one merge field. And so in this screenshot, you'll see inside of Smart Lead, 
I basically put a merge field that says, you know, SL date one day or SL date two days. And so what this does is it basically will insert the next business day if you just put one day or the next two business days if you do two days, right? And so you could do this at scale and you know you could put whatever numbers you'd like that fits your schedule. And what happens is when the email actually goes out to the recipient, they'll get an email that says, are you available on either day one or day two? And it's always gonna be the next business day or the next two business days. And so being really clear on that. And so we add that into our subsequences so it makes it easier for us to actually get like a response and book them in. And so when it comes to our actual subsequences, I wanna show you how we write them and what it looks like. So email one for the info sequence, right? So if someone's requesting more information, it's simply saying, hey, first name, thanks for getting back to me. And then we're entering information about the business. And this just needs to be generic information, like high level stuff. It could be a link to a demo video, some case studies, maybe a one page or whatever it may be, right? And then clear next steps. Let's set up a time to talk, which day is better for you, day one or day two. And like I mentioned, email two is just a simple nudge. And then email three is asking if there's someone else in the organization we should reach out to. So that's how we wrote the info sequence. The future sequence, kind of similar, but basically when you add people into the future subsequence, you can actually queue a day that the message goes out. So if they're saying, hey, you know, reach out to me on April 29th, we can queue a message for April 29th and follow up in that same thread and say, hey, first name, you recommend we re reconnect around this time to discuss the email below. Are you available to have a quick call at time one or time two? If not, please suggest alternatives. Slight nudge, asking if there's someone else in the organization to reach out to. So that's how we go about the future sequence. When it comes to the power sequence, we're super direct. Just, hey, first name, thanks for getting back to me. Let's set up a time to talk, which day is better for you, day one or day two? Right? Then a simple nudge, and then asking if there's someone else in the organization we should reach out to. The referral subsequence is one of my favorite ones. So if this is, you know, them saying, you know, hey, reach out to Billy Bob Joe in the sales department, here's his email, we could basically forward that email and say, Nick suggested I connect, contact you to discuss the email below, let's set up a time to talk, which day time is better for you, day one or day two. And we get to forward the entire thread over. And and this this converts like crazy. And then it's once again simple nudge asking if there's someone else that we should be reaching out to in the organization. So those are our scripts for our subsequences and how we write them. Feel free to use them exactly as is or you know adjust them to what you would like. And when it comes to you know actually enrolling someone into a subsequence, you know what you're now going to get is a response, right? So you're going to add the prospect into the proper subsequence after they. So if, uh, let me kind of backtrack real quick. You have the initial cadence, right? Once they respond, you need to add them into the proper subsequence if needed, right? And then what happens is you wait for them to confirm a date or a time, right? Because they're going to respond either on email one, which we typically will see, or email two or email three, right? And then if they give you a date or time, what you want to do is send over the meeting invite manually. So you can just send out a Google Calendar invite through your calendar to their email address for the time. Or you want to book them into your you know, scheduler. If you're using Calendly, you want to schedule them in manually. And the reason why that you want to do this versus sending a, you know, a Calendly link for them to book into is that it causes friction. And so we noticed that our meeting set rate was lower when we would actually send a calendar over. And that's you know, very strange and kind of weird to get over. But think about it, right? Your prospect gets a calendar link. First of all, links sometimes in cold emails, people are like a little like, whoa, you know, I don't want to click on any kind of weird links. But let's say they do click on the link. Then they have to put in their first name, their last name, their email. And you know, if you have a ton of questions on your, your calendar, you know, they're gonna have to answer all of that. Like that's just friction right there. They also need to check into their calendar and see if they're available at that time and, and, and things of that sort. And so doing that is not the best process. I would rather send over a meeting invite time for the date that they suggested or the time that they suggested and simply reply back to them saying, hey, awesome, I went ahead and sent an invite. I'm looking forward to speaking keeping it simple, right? And so that's how you convert a higher percentage of your positive replies into meetings. And so when it comes to the tech stack, so Smartly currently has subsequences, right? So you can you know, do the subsequence part inside of Smartly. Instantly, which is another popular email sending platform, does not have it, but you know, knowing them, they're on top of their stuff, they're definitely gonna have it on their roadmap, probably in the next month to three months. And so that's what you use to send the actual cold emails and automate the subsequences, right? But to identify replies and manage the, the inbox management process from there, if you have under 100 inboxes, you can use the Google send as method. So basically have like one master inbox where all your responses are going into. And then if you have all the, your inboxes 
connected into this as using the send mail as function, you could basically respond using that inbox in that same thread. And hopefully that makes sense. If it didn't, just Google how to use Google send mail as function and it'll show you. The only issue here though is that each Google inbox will only allow you to connect 100 inboxes. So once you pass 100 inboxes, it's not a good system to have. And so if you have more than 100 inboxes, you wanna use something like front, right? So this is what we use and it is fantastic. And so this is what our process looks like in front. We have one major inbox where all of our clients' inboxes are connected into. So this is like 2,000 inboxes, right? And then we'll create like separate folders for all of our like subsequences and some of our other categories that we track. And so once we get a response from our cold email campaign, they pop into this inbox and our inbox managers are kind of going in and tagging them as, okay, hey, this response, it's a power sequence. Hey, this, this response, it's an info sequence. Hey, this guy's telling us to unsub him, we'll tag him as unsub, right? And that's been vital because we can build a lot of automations around it. And so you'll see right here, we'll have automations that will look for, you know, and like people saying out of office or auto reply in the subject line and it'll automatically just throw them into here. So our inbox managers don't even have to worry about it. Same thing with warm up emails, like filter those out. And you know, sometimes with bounce emails, they all follow the same code. They'll always say like undeliverable in the email. And so like identifying things like that, we're able to build really good, robust rules and automations. The only downside I would say about front is that you do have to pay annually. It's not a month to month subscription. So you'll have to buy five users and prepay for the whole year, which, you know, if it fits into your budget, I would highly suggest it because it is something that is very good. And so that's what it looks like when it comes to using front and how we run our process in there. And so you're probably wondering why you shouldn't rely on your email sending platform. So like, you know, smart lead or instantly or whatever email platform you're using and using the master inbox that they have in there. Right. And so, you know, I've built an email platform before and what I noticed on our send on, on our side was that we run those API calls on a schedule. So sometimes there could be a delay anywhere from five to 30 minutes, which, you know, is not the best when you're trying to convert a cold prospect into a lead or a demo or anything of that sort. And so the longer your delay in actually getting back to them, right, the harder it's gonna be to actually set that meeting. And so you wanna get that to be as quick as you can. And then sometimes the master inbox just simply won't capture the responses. And there's tons of reasons for it, right? Like maybe you're the, the person who responded, they're not on your lead list, you know, they're managing someone else's inbox or like maybe like an assistant reached out from her email, said, hey, you know, you reached out to my boss and I'd love to schedule a meeting. Like th those kind of things, they won't be captured in the inbox, the master inbox for some tools all the time. And one thing I saw constantly in our email tool that we built was that every time our recipient had bad deliverability, which is, you know, a lot of times, and they would email and respond to us back. It would go in our spam folder, like our actual inbox is spam folder. And so our inbox or our, our email platform would never capture that actual response. And so you could create rules inside of front to make sure that never happens and really be on top of it. And so I really love separating our inbox management, like our reply handling and everything from our actual email sending platform. I think that's very vital. And, you know, once we implemented that, we saw our results go up and, you know, I really did. And, and if you do an audit of all your inboxes, like going into each inbox manually, you'll see that like you really are missing out on a ton of responses and opportunities that, you know, can result in better performance for you, retention, more uh, of a performance bonus or whatever, right? And so that's why I would highly suggest not using the email sending platform for inbox management at this current time. And so that's our base framework for inbox management. What I wanna quickly run you through like some of our advanced tips that I'd recommend. So, you know, once you get everything I mentioned above, like dialed in, I would start to incorporate some of these things that I'm about to explain that will once again, just increase your efficiency and really build out a sustainable system for you. And so the first thing I wanna talk about and touch on is monkey learn. And so I got introduced to this tool by my friend Jesse and what you're able to do is train AI models. And so we basically trained a entire model behind our actual categorization of emails. Cause this is what a lot, you know, our inbox managers are spending a lot of time categorizing things. And so if we can automate this process, we become way more efficient. And so we took all of the tags and data that we've had previously and trained a model on it. And basically you can see right here, if you know, I type or if someone responds saying, what are some times you're free, it's automatically gonna tag them into the power subsequence, right? And so if I say, I'd love more info, you'll see that it's going to classify this text as an info and, you know, take me off your list. 
It's going to classify it as an unsubscribe. And so you're basically able to train your own model and integrate this with whatever you're using as that shared inbox to auto categorize the emails. And you know you can build a lot of automations on top of this to to basically be able to just like sort a lot of things for at scale. And so that that's something that we're going to implement. And you know they have a very easy API that you know you can hire a developer to to integrate with your systems very easily. And so that's one thing that I recommend once you have enough data there. That's that's the thing though, right? Like if you have only run this system for one week, you're not going to have enough data to build a model that's you know sufficient and is accurate. And so you need a ton of data there to really be able to train a model. And then you know you can create automations and rules to to identify people that have been enrolled in a subsequence and haven't responded. So let's kind of think about that, right? Like let's say someone requests a meeting, you put them into that first initial power sequence, they don't get back to you, the follow-ups, they don't get back to you, the other follow-ups, they don't get back to you. And at this point, like this is a highly interested lead that showed some level of interest, right? But just hasn't gotten back to you. So it kind of does make sense to follow up with them. And so what I would recommend is creating something that identifies the people that don't respond to your subsequences so that you can do follow-ups on other channels. And I would highly recommend doing some cold calls because at this point, it's kind of like a warm call because they've showed interest and then you've done three touch points on top of your initial cadence. And so when you call them, like they're probably gonna know who you are and it's gonna be much easier to convert those kind of guys into an actual meeting. And the other benefit here is that, you know, 20 to 40% of the time, like you're gonna find a direct phone number in their email signature. So it makes it much easier to convert those. And you know, it makes sense to kind of follow up on other channels as well. So that's something I'd also add into your process once you know, you've know you already built the fundamentals out. And one thing I, I touched on a little bit earlier is that the fifth subcategory of responses that you'll get is a custom response request. So let's say someone responds and they say, you know, like let's say we're selling SEO. They say, hey, I'm wondering if you guys do backlink outreach and could you send me more information on your company, right? And so you don't want to be lazy and put them into an information request because your conversion rate is going to be low on that because you didn't answer their initial question about the backlink. And so you need to do a custom response. And you know if you're training an inbox manager on this, and you know they may not be able to answer that question because they don't know about your client, or sometimes they may not know that specific you know question and how to answer it. And so what we've done is build out a system inside of Airtable where we put the prospect's message, we'll put the prospect's website, and then the email and the name, and then we'll build a system that sends it to the client, right? So if you look right here for our clients at Leapbird, we basically are able to, to send an email with the conversation with the company and they're able to like reply to the inbox manager and let them know how they would answer that specific scenario. And so once we installed this, our inbox manager started to get much better at actually converting from the subsequences into actual meeting books because you know now they're not gonna just forcefully add a prospect into an information sequence when they don't need to. And so this is something I want to get add into your process and system. And this is the last automation that I think is very vital and this is something that you can automate inside of Smart Lead. So in Smart Lead, you can build those subsequences and you could build a robust automation for when you actually apply the tag, right? So let's say you're in the master client inbox, you tag you know, this email as a power sequence. What's gonna happen is you can create an automation to, to fire off a webhook, find the prospect that you just tagged inside of your email sending platform, which is Smart Lead, add them to the subsequence by updating their category, and then come back into front of your shared inbox and archive it so you know it's been completed, right? And so Smart Leads API, it's, it's, it's really good. It's very advanced. You could probably build some of the most robust email automations in the entire world using their API. I think they have the most advanced API when it comes to any email platform. And so this is like the, the, the steps that you'd use and you would build out those categories inside of Smart Lead as well. And so that's a quick rundown of our inbox management process that we've installed at Leaper that is pretty successful. You know, we're generating anywhere from 40 to 50 leads a day for our clients. And, you know, we're really able to delegate and automate this entire process and train and onboard inbox managers much quicker. And so, you know, if you're a B2B agency or SaaS company, you have a legitimate offer, maybe you have a sales team in place already, and you're looking for more leads on a paper lead basis, feel free to you know, use a link below and book a call with us at Libra.io. You know, we've worked with, you know, over 100 plus clients. We have tons of reviews on G2 and we absolutely crush it and we do it on a performance basis. So we only get paid once we generate e-results. So that's our inbox management process. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to our team and we'll be happy to help you guys.